I had to split the PowerPoint into two halves, so this is continued lesson four into lesson five. Okay, so this one is now moving already over to the next bit. This is going over to the different types of muscle fibers. I've uploaded some basic GCSE PE videos if you're finding the starting point for this here too tough. Um, and but but you do need to know a little bit more than GCSE PE. So we have got slow twitch and fast twitch fibers. They can do slightly different things and they're better at different things. So generally we have both. In some areas of our bodies we have got more than others. Genetically you have more than one type than the other. Um, different animals performing different functions have got more of one type than the other. So let's go. I don't think I've got many vegetarians in our class at the moment. Uh, red meat. Why is it red meat? Why is lamb looking different to chicken breast? Um, there are various reasons for why you've got that different visual appearance. The red can, for one, come from a better vascular supply, so more blood supply. Therefore, you've got potentially at the time of death, you've got a little, a few more red blood cells and therefore a bit more hemoglobin still stuck in the capillaries in that tissue. And yes, darker meat is generally more vascularized because that's where more aerobic respiration is taking place. And you do need the rich blood supply to continuously remove the carbon dioxide and supply the oxygen. So you may have more hemoglobin there. But also dark red meat needs to have a little bit of a store of oxygen within those cells and a, a good capacity of removing the oxygen from the hemoglobin and pulling it into the actual muscle cell. Now, myoglobin sounds very similar to hemoglobin and it's got a very similar function. It is holding on to oxygen. However, it's got a higher oxygen negative. Well, it's got a higher oxygen affinity. Yeah, you do know that word from the um, circulatory unit. You know the words oxygen affinity. So myoglobin has got a higher oxygen affinity than hemoglobin. Oxygen will move from hemoglobin into the myoglobin, so it's in the cell. And in uh, darker meats, you've got more myoglobin for that. Also, if you need more aerobic respiration, you will need more mitochondria. More mitochondria in a place darkens the appearance as it is anyway. If you want to go off on a tangent for a laugh, there is a tissue type called brown adipose tissue, which is instead of white looking fat, darker looking fat, some sort of browny looking fat. And it's there for generating heat rather than uh, just simply food storage or insulation. So let's do a bit of a comparison. Um, the typical fast twitch fibers are in your eyelids because they need to close very, very quickly. So if you were to try and close your eyelids quickly, that works. You really have got some speed on those. Your slow twitch fibers are your postural muscles. So muscles you've got in your thighs, in your bottom, lower back, in your belly, abdomen area. So literally all your standing upright for hours and hours and hours. They are your slow twitch fibers. They may not react quite as quickly as your eyelid does. Please don't do any jerky, silly moving uh, movements when trying that out. Um, in terms of energy, a fast twitch fiber will very, very quickly flick to anaerobic respiration. If you want to get sore eyelids or the muscles around your eyes sore, just try to blink about 30, 40 times in a row and you will feel it automatically. Please do stop before it hurts too much. Whereas your slow twitch fibers, they get their energy from aerobic respiration. So it does take a considerable time before they would fatigue. It does take some time. Fast twitch are much brighter. The fast twitch pie fibers, think of your chicken breasts. Chicken breasts are pretend flying muscles. A chicken can actually fly for about a minute and then it goes lactic and it can't fly anymore. Um, so um, they're your typical quick and jump and run away sort of uh, muscles. And the slow twitch fiber, think of an animal that does a lot of standing and more standing and then suddenly you're, oh, it's a beef. Um, so kind of consider that one. Oh, I've done the energy source already in terms of respiration. Energy source, the, the fast twitch, the aerobic obviously is no longer in the mitochondria. However, for the slow twitch, you've got the aerobic part in the mitochondria. Fast twitch would only be in the cytoplasm where you've got the reaction all the way, glycolysis only from glucose to pyruvate and then going into lactate and lactic acid. So you're going to regenerate the NAD. That was component one. Okay, so it's all recapping other things, okay?
Um, what activity are they suited to? Fast twitch are for yeah, fast movements, for escape movements, for protective movements, avoiding tissue damage, damage movements, running, sprinting, anything fast, boxing, oh, I suppose any karate chops. There are loads of fast movements. The slow twitch fibers, like I said, your postural ones, your walking, your long distance marathon running, for example. Um, obviously, cycling, you can do two different ways as well. Cycling, you can go, go fast or you can go slow. Uh, where can you find them? I think I've covered that one as well. And genetically, there is something you will have from birth that you cannot train more than you can only train. If you are born with far more fast twitch fibers, you've automatically got an advantage as a prince. If you're born with a higher percentage of slow twitch fibers, you might as well go and, and uh, practice for a marathon. This is the nature and nurture debate. I've got a couple of different pictures of different animals coming up with regards to the meat color and what this animal would be doing. Just literally enjoy. This is all for the sake of having pictures and visual and, and imagining your chickens try to fly away and therefore what color would the, the meat be. So just it's all different ratios. If I would tell if I want you to believe that chickens only have fast twitch fibers in their in their chicken in their breast muscle, the flight muscle, that's not only but the proportion of the percentage will be much higher so what have we got we've got chickens that have got in their legs not used for flying um a lot of standing so um pull that back to your memory of last time when you've eaten a chicken or the next time you're eating chicken how do actually those muscles compare visibly before or after cooking i'll leave that with you um flight time of ducks compared to the flight time of chickens um if you do eat duck you will probably know that the color of, of a duck breast is a whole a lot darker and all that argument of it's being more vascularized more blood flowing into it more mitochondria for aerobic respiration more myoglobin to be able to get the oxygen with its higher oxygen affinity from the hemoglobin all those arguments need to be in your kind of argument why a duck breast is looking darker your beef your lamb standing on a field and doing more standing and more standing so therefore what would it be it would be the slow twitch fiber so they've got more of um pigs are a bit of an in between it's a bit of an in between uh the animals that we used uh, use for for pork i think the slaughter happens at about four months so piglets are being turned into bacon and pork chops before they're even adults they would develop a slightly darker color than than what you usually get them in the supermarket the next time you're eating a fish and you can tell on a salmon a much nicer than for some white fish some white fish it's not very obvious for salmon you've got the best part of the salmon which is pink in appearance and then you've got a, a bit of a gray looking bit towards the edge towards the skin so i kind of think of what does the salmon need to do does it need to do long distance um continued swimming through the oceans for miles and miles and miles yes it does but also salmon in their adult life at some point need to jump back up the river where they came from so that they can lay their eggs and, and spawn the eggs so you've got the requirement for fast and slow twitch fibers if you've never seen a, a salmon jumping up a waterfall for goodness sake watch it and watch brother bear you could actually um, determine whether a person has slow or fast twitch fibers more in their percentages in their muscles by taking a biopsy now that is rather invasive you may not want to do that during the active sporting time of their lives um, but that's just just that you know that this exists as an option now the slow twitch they are the ones I think I've re I'm repeating myself here but that might might help you have got the ability to yes it contracts slowly but it can happen over a long period of time great at aerobically just keep going keep going breathe and breathe and breathe and keep exercising those muscles slowly it's a large store of myoglobin because of the oxygen affinity and getting the oxygen into the cell you've got a huge supply of glycogen oh i'll need to get to that story as well um you might have heard of 
marathon runners or triathletes the day before they're running a long race so they might be carb loading carb loading means you just eat a huge bowl of pasta or rice or bread and then more pasta and then some garlic bread with it or whatever it is just very carbohydrate heavy meals and i've never actually tried it but apparently you can measure your thigh circumference with a measuring tape before and after eating and carb loading and it will increase measurably it's about two percent of your entire muscle mass is actually glycogen stored you can apparently measure the difference of those yeah anyway that's not not directly related to to the color or appearance of it um, we've also got a rich supply of those blood vessels in order for the oxygen to actually be there get from the tissue fluid back into the muscles and numerous mitochondria which may give it a brownie appearance rather Rather than a, a ready appearance as an opposed to that you've got the fast twitch need to contract rapidly very powerful but only for a short period of time and then that's it so eyelids and chicken wings a uh, chicken uh, breast muscles they are exhausted and go lactic fairly quickly they are generally far more heavy in myosin and the concentration of enzymes for anaerobic respiration so they're getting from the pyruvate to the lactate you'll need an enzyme to get the pyruvate to lactate so these enzymes are there in a higher abundance than in other muscle cells and creatine i'm sure that we've mentioned creatine in the kidney unit where you've got your urine uric acid and creatine as the three substances that the kidney plus more but that's not your syllabus uh substances that the kidneys do need to uh expel that's literally a waste product of um protein contraction and the, the sort of wastage that you get in terms of muscles being made and reshaped and breaking and making and shaping and breaking a little slide on the different muscle fiber types just to recap it all also a little video link for you to think through what were the fast twitch slow twitch what were the three muscle fibers all together um, which ones are more suited to aerobic and mitochondria for you to decide whether you're using this slide or not also for you to decide as in uh, how do you deal with dodgy graph do you want to have a practice at dealing with the dodgy graph that you're going to get because that is one potentially describe the blood flow to the muscles and explain why it changes during exercise so um blood flow to the muscles what is it that is controlling the blood flow to the muscles you should already maybe have the idea of blood vessels widening or, or narrowing vasodilation vasoconstriction if muscles are being used nervous system if your autonomic nervous system went from the parasympathetic into sympathetic mode because you're stressed and you've got a, a tiger chasing you then adrenaline will be released and you will have a widening effect of all your blood vessels to allow more, sorry not all your blood vessels the blood vessels supplying your muscles your skeletal muscles they will widen to allow a higher blood flow there other blood flow will be shut down because at that point in time isn't it's not necessary to consider bone growth while you're running away from a from a tiger in that moment that's irrelevant so have a just a little look at that diagram with the, the green and the red bars which areas do you think will be needed most during what exercise and during the exercise not during the recovery the redirection of blood flow into the various areas of your body and when it is needed where that is linking with your nervous system unit so if you are in a parasympathetic state and your body is at rest your heart will have its normal cardiac output you're not suddenly going to have a bigger heart just because you're exercising that that very moment it won't happen immediately okay so there's a long-term training that you're going to be able to make a smaller difference the bigger difference that you're doing with exercise is actually vascularization so that new capillaries grow all over your muscles and more capillaries grow around your alveoli that's more sort of an effect that you're going to get from exercise than actually increasing the size of your heart which will happen but it's not a not as significant as the, the vascularization 
Now, what you can do is direct the blood. You should, from your GCSE days and the homeostasis idea, remember the blood direction towards the skin if you're hot. So the vasodilation towards the skin to make your skin flushed red, more blood flowing into it, and you can lose more heat through radiation into the environment. Or you can keep more blood towards the inside, so you can redirect and shut down the blood supply to the to the extremities, um, you lose them through frostbite, but who cares if you're inside, manages to survive somehow. Um, so literally you've got vasodilation and constriction. If you don't have a memory aid, dilation, dilate, getting wider, um, and constrict, boa constrictor, you know, the snake that wraps itself around you and suffocates you by holding onto your rib cage in a way that you cannot uh, inflate your, your actual chest ca uh, cavity anymore. Um, so at rest, you have got blood supply to the muscle because it does need to be maintained, but it increases from 20 to about 80%. I can see a lovely maths question with a bit of a graph coming up there and you need to read the differences. Just imagine you're the examiner again and you need to think through what sort of questions, where can I fit my 25% of maths questions in? That is an ideal place, isn't it? Thinking of how do you redirect and numbers of redirecting it. Right, about this um, carb loading and measuring your thigh circumference, I did mention that already. Um, ATP, you've got the structure of ATP in your heads already from core concepts, but we've always told you you cannot store it or move it from one cell to another unless you're a plant and you've got your companion cells supplying the sift tube element cells, um, but you can't store it. However, you can store the phosphate on a place where you can release it from the phosphate back from the to attach it to the ADP into an ATP again really quickly. And we've also told you that creatine is just a waste product. So slight twist to the story coming up here. If you have got a situation where you're just about to go into anaerobic respiration or you are in anaerobic respiration and you just want to make most of whatever there is in a cell, the key bit of the diagram here that I want you to look at is here that first part because creatine, yes, it's it's a waste product of, of muscular contractions and, and it's a sort of a yeah, it's a damaged product, which eventually does need to be removed. You can't have too, too high levels of creatine in your blood supply or in your muscles. The creatine itself can be phosphorylated, and then you've got creatine phosphate in completely dye and dry needs where you've got way too much ADP because you just couldn't phosphorylate it anymore. That phosphate group will be moved from the creatine phosphate back onto the ADP to make ATP. It regenerates the creatine by itself. Yes, that's still a waste product. But in the meantime, you've had a temporary keeping the, the phosphate attached to something where it's easily um, easily taken up from again. Now, we should actually have an additional diagram here on how the creatine phosphate is being made. But that's literally, let's call it during plentiful plentiful times where there was enough oxygen around to do aerobic respiration for that time. It allows for literally the time of a sprint for those bizarre, it would not take me eight or nine seconds to do 100 meters, uh, it would take me way longer than 15 seconds, but at your age you might still do that. Um, but for that short sprint, it just gives you enough energy. And yes, then you've got your oxygen debt. The oxygen debt, where have we covered this? We've covered that in component one we have, so that is already done. This is a little bit of going back to your core concepts right at the start when you did biochemistry, the different mono and disaccharides. You might at this point think, OK, let's just eat a whole lot of sweets and therefore we're going to run faster. It needs to be specific sugars because some of our sugars we cannot actually metabolize in the muscles directly it will need to go via the liver and very often in a time of plenty the liver will not release those sugars back into the circulation for muscle cells to use at all no those sugars will be stored into fat and that's where your non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is coming from so what is it that you may want to eat if you are carb loading um the glucose is a good one that is one that you can metabolize directly however the, anything containing fructose so bizarre enough, the sugars found in fruit actually don't immediately and directly help you with, with running. It needs to first be metabolized in the liver and then it's available for, for you to have it as, as the right type of glucose once it's been stored into glycogen and then 
released from the glycogen again. So it's a bit of an in-between bread. So if you're carb loading, it will need to be um, glucose containing things. So pasta, bread, rice, potatoes, anything that's got the, the glucose in the right combination. Um, obviously, you do need to have the, the uh, a good intake of protein to maintain your muscles and the right amino acids. Um, bodybuilders will speak volumes about what you need to be eating here and when you need to be eating it. So I'm not going to take that away because that's where my expertise is, is ending in terms of bodybuilding. Fatigue. Now, this is not cramping. This is now not a, a salt imbalance. This is now a fatigue. The muscle just no longer no longer been able to contract at all. Just bleh. um one of them can be because the nervous system is completely out of ions it can transfer. Uh, so it can't regenerate the signal over and over. So the nervous system just no longer talks to the muscle in that in that situation. So let's say a marathon runner right at the end of their race and it's just going bleh, not working. Um, the other one is a metabolic metabolic way of reaching the point of just no longer working. The blood supply may not have contained enough glucose anymore. If you see marathon runners running, they will have their specific sports drinks. Sports drinks are made for marathon runners because they do contain glucose um, so that that is maintained. Um, also salts because you're sweating those out, but that's a different thing. It's not to do with muscle fatigue. However, you can also, if you are running just that little bit too fast and you're going just that little bit into anaerobic, um, go into lactic, uh, into lactic uh, sort of um, anaerobic burning, which means you're building up lactate, you've got the pH lowered, pH changes, change protein, so your actin and myosin will be twisting around, um, and it reduces the sensitivity to calcium ions going in, and the hard biochemical reasons, you're not going to get any more contractions. This now would be your cramp. Now the cramps usually happen either out of a water or out of a salt imbalance, and it's linked with, with acidity changes, so your lactic acid building up. So it, a cramp is a severe involuntary contraction. So not just a little bit of, oh, it hurts, a, a proper cramp can be ouch, and you do have to stop whatever you're doing because it really hurts. Um, can happen in skeletal muscle, but also can happen in smooth muscle. So um, those suffering with eye BS and having all sorts of cramps around their digestive tract um, experience that on a regular basis. For runners, it happens often in calves and thighs and sort of in the arches of the foot that it just kind of um, curls the toes inwards. Now, um, it's generally for long distance athletes, but it can also happen when you are relaxed and it often starts very quick, ends relatively soon. Um, but because it's a severe contraction for a while, you may actually have damaged the muscle a little bit. And that takes a bit of recovering time over the next few days. Um, and it's an imbalance by ions, usually um, potassium chloride. I've heard of magnesium as well being responsible, a lack of magnesium linking itself to cramps here. Again, a little bit of biochemistry recap. Glycogen was your branched polysaccharide, your branched um, storage compound that you find mostly in the liver, but also in muscle cells. Uh, it's insoluble. It will stay in the muscle cell itself, itself, while the glucose is the soluble monosaccharide, which is circulating uh, around in your bloodstream. Now, through exercise, you can actually increase how much you can store um, and uh, it's training, it's eating habits um, and it can change from person to person based on genetics as well. It's got to do with your thyroid function as well and, and how overall your mitochondria are being encouraged to do their thing. So you can change how much starch can be held in storage within your cell. I think I have covered this here. I haven't used the word glycemic index though, so that's something I might want to throw at you. You may hear this in a context of diabetes and controlling diabetes through the diet. A low glycemic food would be something like oil or butter or, or eggs, literally containing no carbohydrates, um, full of other stuff, full of fats and proteins maybe, but literally no carbohydrates that would then spike your sugar levels, therefore spike the insulin levels and 
could put your body into a confused state if your insulin control doesn't work at all. So eating a diet with a low glycemic index is something that they would suggest for someone who's got a mild type 2 diabetes that you may just be able to control with diet. Um, now, eating foods with a high glycemic index, so the starches and the sugars, so, uh, sweet potatoes seem to be really high on the high glycemic index uh, listing there. That literally is is, is is a great thing for endurance training, which is, is direct food for the slow twitch fibers. Um, however, there is a lot of argument uh, for using fats and using the whole idea of using ketones for burning, not your syllabus. So let's leave that for exciting sports research for later on in your careers. Um, and the carb loading is a long term problem. If you're having too much carb loading on a regular basis, you can actually cause yourself to have an up and down with your insulin levels and therefore the release of your glucose back into the bloodstream. So you might you might actually do something um, that damage your, damages your glucose control long term rather than releasing the sugars where you want them. Um, hitting a wall is just a phrase that athletes use to express the point in time where their bodies are running out of sugars. So it's it's a moment of fatigue. Sometimes you can break through that, but sometimes it just needs a little rest to allow your body to catch up with, actually allow your enzymes to metabolize the, the glycogen stores into glucose, which is pseudo soluble and then uh, able to be metabolized again. Right, and that is it for this bit.